People often say that sharks are older than trees. This is completely true. The earliest plant we would recognize as a proper tree appeared about 350 million years ago. The first sharks appeared around 400 million years ago. Today, sharks come in all shapes and sizes, but obviously there were a whole lot of sharks in between then and now. So without further ado, the complete chronological history of sharks. Now, it's important to note that the shark family tree is not really a direct path. It's more like a family web. But with that said, I'll do my best to keep things in a straightforward chronological order. It's thought that the earliest fish had no bones, no eyes, and no fins. About 455 million years ago, this species then evolved into two separate categories of fish, bony fish and cartilaginous fish. Sharks evolved from the category of cartilaginous fish. Basically, they have cartilage rather than bones. Now, scientists don't entirely agree when the first shark species came into existence. They have discovered scales from 450 million years ago that could be from shark-like species, but there's no evidence that these were anything like the sharks of today. However, scientists have found shark-like teeth that date back to the early Devonian period, about 410 million years ago. These teeth belong to a species called Delodius problematicus. While the teeth are very sharky, the species themselves would look nothing like modern sharks. They had scales and spines all over their body, however, they did have a cartilage skeleton, a shark-like skull, and shark-like teeth, so maybe they're something like the prototype shark. Shortly thereafter, during the middle of that same Devonian period, around 380 million years ago, a species called Cladosalaki appeared. This is the first species that we would really recognize as a shark, but some scientists would consider them part of the Chimera group, basically like a sister species to sharks as we know them today. In any case, Cladosalaki had slender torpedo-shaped bodies, forked tails, and shark-like dorsal fins. Visually, they're pretty close to the sharks of today. Cladosalaki grew to be about six feet long and lived in the oceans around present-day North America. Its streamlined body, forked tail, and dorsal fins suggest that it was a fast-moving hunting predator. Scientists know a pretty good deal about this species because its fossils were well-preserved enough to include traces of skin, muscle fibers, and even internal organs. But then, just as sharks were getting started, an extinction event at the end of the Devonian period killed off at least 75% of all species on Earth, including many fish and sea creatures. But this would turn out to be a blessing in disguise for sharks, because they survived as they often do when it comes to extinction. And with competition now minimized, sharks were able to essentially take over the oceans. This created a time period referred to as the Golden Age of Sharks, or more scientifically, the Carboniferous Period, which began around 359 million years ago. During this time, sharks developed into creatures of all shapes and sizes. In total, there were now over 40 different types of sharks in the sea. Some of these were pretty bizarre looking by today's standards. The shark Stethicanthus had an anvil-shaped appendage on its head. Helicoprion had a circular jaw, but they were all distinctly shark-like in appearance. All in all, things were going pretty well for sharks at this point. But then, 252 million years ago, there was yet another great extinction. In fact, the biggest in Earth's history. This event is often called the Great Dying, and it wiped out 96% of all marine life. According to Stanford University, the ocean extinction was caused by global warming that left marine animals basically unable to breathe. Water temperatures went up, and this warmer water could not hold enough oxygen to sustain marine life. Just about every marine species died, except a few types of, you guessed it, sharks. This led into the early Jurassic period, which was 195 million years ago. During this time, we see the earliest modern sharks. These are called hexancoforms, or six-gill sharks, because they have six or seven gills, rather than four. Indeed, this order of sharks still exists today and is represented by five different species. Through the Jurassic period, these sharks evolved to swim faster and they developed flexible, protruding jaws, which allowed them to eat prey bigger than themselves. After this, sharks move into the Cretaceous period, which began 145 million years ago. Again, sharks were doing pretty well. Populations were strong and there was a wide variety of shark species. 
But then there was yet another mass extinction. This is the one that wiped out the dinosaurs, you know, with the asteroid. This event wiped out most of the largest species of shark. You may be thinking Megalodon at this point, but he actually doesn't even exist yet. Some smaller species of shark that lived in the deepest parts of the ocean survived this event. Once again, the lack of competition allowed sharks to flourish and grow larger into the Paleogene period. This began around 66 million years ago. During this time, a species called Odotus appeared. This was a direct precursor to Megalodon, growing about 30 feet long. After that, sharks get into the Neogene period. It was at this point that Megalodon first appeared. There are dozens of videos all about Megalodon, so we won't spend too much time on him. But Megalodon is considered the largest, most powerful predator to ever exist. It was estimated in 2021 to be around 57 and 79 feet long. Megalodon fossils have been found on six of the seven continents, suggesting that they were pretty common and lived in relatively shallow seas. It was also during this time that many modern sharks appeared, including the great white, the mako, and the tiger shark. But then there was another massive extinction. And sharks almost didn't survive this one, with their populations shrinking by over 90%. Scientists think sharks never really recovered from this event. Without this extinction, there would be a whole lot more sharks and species of sharks swimming in our oceans today. There are some theories, but scientists don't really know what happened to cause the event. There was no corresponding land extinction at the time, so whatever happened only impacted marine life. It's also bizarre that sharks survived so many extinctions, but something about this one very nearly wiped them out. But since then, sharks haven't really changed much. Clearly, they're very resilient. They've been around for almost half a billion years. The species as a whole has survived five great extinctions, some of which wiped out virtually every other animal on Earth. There are a few reasons why they are so tenacious. One is their dietary flexibility. Many species of sharks can basically eat anything. If one food species disappears or goes extinct, sharks just eat something else. Sharks can also utilize the entirety of the vertical water column. Many species can survive in the deep sea, near coastlines, and just about everywhere in between. The final factor is that there are a lot of different sharks. Indeed, the fossil record indicates that there have been about 3,000 species of shark. Each of these species has very unique adaptations, so whatever event happens, there's usually at least one type of shark that's able to survive. The only question now is if sharks will survive the next extinction the one that humans are creating right now. Since 1970, shark populations have declined between 70 and 90% depending on the species. That's a worrying stat, as apex predators, the entire ocean's ecosystem depends on sharks. Most of the decline is due to overfishing. Sharks are taken for their meat fins, gill plates, and liver oil. They're also often taken as bycatch, caught incidentally in the nets of fishermen. However, there's still time to fix things. Thanks to environmental science and research, we now understand how to reduce or entirely eliminate bycatch. The information is there, it's just a matter of acting on it. Hopefully, humans can do just that.